Hello everyone. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has once again been indicted for misconduct related to the preservation of classified documents. This is the first time in history that a former U.S. president has been charged with federal criminal offenses. So what happened? Could Donald Trump go to jail? Let's find out in this video. On June 19, 2023, Former U.S. President Donald Trump was charged with 37 criminal counts related to retaining classified documents after leaving the White House. This is the first time a former U.S. president has faced criminal charges from the government he once led. It is also the second time Trump has been charged with a criminal offense after being accused of paying hush money to two women during the 2016 election. This case is being overseen by Special Prosecutor Jack Smith, who was once an investigator of war crimes. Smith is also overseeing a separate investigation into Trump's role in the infiltrate the U.S. Congress. So what are classified documents and what did Trump do with them? According to U.S. law, classified information or documents are those related to national security or foreign relations of the United States that, if disclosed, could harm the United States or its interests. These documents are classified into three levels, secret, top secret, and confidential. These levels reflect the degree of damage if disclosed. Only those with access rights and need are allowed to view or use classified documents. According to the charges, Trump brought about 300 classified documents to his mansion in Florida after the White House on January 20. These documents include transcripts of Trump's meetings and calls with foreign leaders, intelligence reports, and policy directives. Under U.S. law, Former presidents have the right to retain some documents related to their activities at the White House but are not allowed to retain classified documents. These documents must be returned to the government or stored safely as required. However, according to the charges, Trump left classified documents in unsafe places such as bathrooms and ballrooms and did not have any protective measures to prevent unauthorized access. Trump also refused to return classified documents to the government even after being ordered to return all remaining documents. Trump's ownership of marked secret documents was also charged. According to the charges, Trump obstructed government investigation efforts by encouraging his employees and associates not to cooperate with authorities and distorting evidence and statements. So how could Trump be punished? Retaining classified documents may violate the Espionage Act, a federal law enacted in 1978 to prevent disclosure of classified information related to national security or foreign relations of the United States. This law has many different provisions, but one provision relevant to Trump's case is Section 793. According to this section, anyone who discloses or allows others to know or fails to take measures to protect classified documents may be sentenced up to 10 years in prison. This applies both to those with access rights and classified documents and those without access rights. In addition, retaining classified documents may also violate the Presidential Records Act, a federal law enacted in 1978 to ensure that presidential and vice presidential records are stored and made public as required. This law also requires presidents and vice presidents to comply with any requests from the National Archives regarding record handling. Violating the Presidential Records Act can result in fines or imprisonment for up to three years. Thus, if convicted, Trump could face up to 10 years in prison. However, Many factors can affect the outcome of a case such as jury selection, evidence presented, laws and regulations, and Trump's criminal record as well as his lawyer's skill level. Speaking a little about jury selection, U.S. law has something very interesting and very fair. When someone is charged with a criminal offense they have the right to be tried by an impartial and fair jury. Impartiality and fairness are expressed in how. The answer is that juries will be selected from citizens who meet eligibility criteria living in areas where cases are handled. In Trump's case, jury selection may be difficult due to political polarization and Trump's fame. There may be people who strongly support or oppose Trump or people who have preconceived opinions about events. Prosecutors and defense attorneys will have to search for people who can objectively evaluate evidence and make their own decisions. So what happens after the case ends? For the first time, Trump could go to jail but this possibility is very low. However, even if Trump does not have to go to jail, it does not mean there is no damage afterwards but according to analysts' assessments this case not only affects Trump's reputation and political future but can also cause serious consequences for national security and foreign relations of America. 
If Trump's leaked or stolen secret documents by enemies or rivals of America, then it could reveal military secrets American intelligence policies endangering America's interests and safety this country along with its allies. In addition then Trump being charged can also damage America's reputation and credibility in world eyes weaken America's leadership role in international issues. In general, then handling this case will depend on many factors such as jury selection evidence presented regulations and Trump's profile and more importantly the level of Trump's lawyer help whatever the result then this case will be one of the most important historical events of American politics. Thank you for watching the video goodbye and see you again.